nice tits, bitch. Hello, fiends and fiendettes. Welcome to episode 81 of the best horror podcast on 7voltmedia.com and the world. Scream Fiends, I'm your host, Xander, and with me once again is Russ. Hi. If you're just joining us for the first time on this show, <laughs> we talk about all the things Not going on the whole time. in the world of <laughs> horror. And if you're a long-time listener, you know we oftentimes don't follow by any sort of guidelines, rules, etc., etc., etc. You know how it goes. Get at us on Twitter at Scream Fiends. Let us know what you're watching, what we should watch. Now turn that into a British accent, right? And you could be that creepy vampire guy in the It crowd. Oh, <laughs> Remember, uh, IT IT crowd, the uh, Raymond or yeah. Ron or whatever. Things. I can't do accents. I can't ta- even talk normally. So, <laughs> you know, you do. Uh, I I do appreciate how well you pronounce consonants, though. See, I always feel like I'm slurring, though. I think if I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I just talk, and it it's like mumbling. Nope. <laughs> It's always pretty crystal clear. I don't think so. <laughs> I think I don't know. In my day to day, you never life. say oh, I gotta go. I gotta button up my shirt. It's I have to button up my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> At least you don't like, yeah. <laughs> button at Twitter. At Twitter at at Twitter at Twitter at Scream Fiends. Scream Fiends. Something good. Something bad. Something mediocre. Mediocrity. Mediocre. Is key. Patreon.com slash Scream Fiends. You can donate if you would like, but you do not have to. All of our content is free of charge, but we love your support. That'd be awesome. Right, you, know, cool. you know, we want to get new stuff, new, better cameras, better audio. Probably Buy us a computer. Buy us a computer. I had to reboot that thing. Had to erase everything. Oh, really? Re reinstalled Windows. That sucks. Oh. I I didn't have to, but it was like running real slow, and I'm sure I downloaded something that wasn't very computer friendly. Kosher. Naughty. Kosher. I don't download anything on my computer. Yeah, I probably shouldn't. I should probably not. <laughs> not. <laughs> I don't know. I should not download. If you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> congratulations. You've won. What have they won, Russ? Nothing. Nothing. But please subscribe. Please like. Please comment below. There. Down there. You know. Somewhere around here. Should we start adding things to our videos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't know how to how to do that. I'm just learning how to edit videos. Actually, I'm not. I'm kind of a pro now. I've edited like I don't even know. I think we have like 18 in the teens videos already. Nice. What are you doing with your phone at first? We're doing it. We're so good at this. I don't know. What am I doing? What is this? I don't know. Bunch of nonsense. From now, I'm always scared that we're actually recording through your your webcam. <laughs> I've been pretty good about checking. Okay. <laughs> See, that could have been a disaster not plugging you in. Yeah, that would have been bad. <clears throat> a good thing we noticed that. That's the things that happen thing here on uh, Scream Fiends. Most professional, well thought out, well scripted <laughs> <laughs> program on the air. Making shit <laughs> subscribe up. on iTunes, subscribe on Google Play, all that good stuff. So, Russ, what have you been watching, playing, etc., etc.? I've been only doing et one cetera. thing since last time we met, and that's watching The Office mm. and playing Monster Hunter. Glad you got into that office. 
It's good. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah i think it's one of the best shows I, out yeah, there it's that's it's, ever been on i just sit there and just keep watching it too see why can't i do that with anything else like i could it's do- it's it's so easy to digest yeah, it's like it really is that's how i fall asleep to it every single night yeah you're telling me that yeah and it's because it is like it's i mean it's good comedy yeah but it's also like really you don't have to think very hard nope. to get any of the jokes Mm-mm. or anything. It's uh, all right on it's on it's right there in your face. Yeah. There's talk of actually a revival. Don't do it. If they got all the original cast, don't like do don't it. do what they did with Scrubs. I didn't see what they did with Scrubs. That's it's basically one I Scrubs on. the college years. Oh. I mean it took place with a bunch of like college uh oh. what do they call those? Not interns, uh RNs? No, that's nurses. Residents. Residents. Uh, wait now. Um, is Scrubs on any of the um, the streaming de- uh, streaming platforms right now? You know, I don't think so. Poop. Maybe Hulu. I don't know. I don't know. I have to look. I kind of feel like watching that show. That's a good show too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. What else? There's something besides The Office. You said there. Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. It finally came out. <sighs> There's monsters in it. Yeah. So it's horror related. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about it. <laughs> uh, there's not much to say. It's the same Monster Hunter game that it ha- that's been out there for a while, except for they've streamlined a bunch of shit. Yeah. It's really all they've done is they just streamlined it and made the graphics better. Mm. And um, so it's great. I mean, they didn't even have to do that. Everything they did to make the game better, they didn't have to do, and I still would have loved it. Well, it's on an actual console that people play yep. now, so that helps. that's that definitely helps. Yep, it's also on the Xbox One. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> not doing too good on that Xbox it's One. Not, it's just the matchmaking; they'll figure it out. And the yeah. they're, uh, the uh, Xbox owners are pissy because uh, from the they brief, made a bad decision in the first place. It, well, there's that, but that's not what they're <laughs> bitching about. They're bitching that there wasn't a. Um, beta test for the for the uh, Xbox. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's only on PlayStation 4 where it belongs because people in Japan well, that play the shit out of Monster Hunter don't buy Xboxes. Yeah, no one buys an Xbox in Japan. Nope. But, uh, yeah, I think the multiplayer is kind of a little bit wonky to begin with. Once you figure out the... Ca- it's kind of Nintendo-esque. Yeah. And it's, like, setting up. But once I you mean, get it, it's fine. Yeah, it's not broken, but it's... It's just a little bit tricky as to how you go about it's joining really, people. And it's convoluted. Yeah. It doesn't need to be that difficult, but it's I've dealt with it. I mean, I was playing this game multiplayer with the Wii and the Wii U mm. and the three D S, you know, and yeah. so I've I've seen the worst that it has to offer. But. Well, and in a way it kind of makes not makes sense, but it it it's actually a pretty smart way to do it because you can go off and start a hunt while you and you don't have to wait for the other people in the party to to be there Mm -hmm. they can join you like they can go and do whatever eat eat their cat meals and uh i don't know do make sure their weapons are up to snuff get the traps ready get their other supplies and then come join you on the hunt. Yeah, so in a way it does it is kind of smart um but it's also like you said very kind of con- convoluted. Sure, like I it would be nice if like you could do matchmaking from the game. Like mm. you can matchmake and get into a room with other people playing, but you might not get a chance to play with them. Right. If they're all doing their own thing. But um, that would be nice if you could get into a room, but you could match make out just in uh, across the whole game. Just, you know, right. if you want to get into a random thing, you know, yeah. whatever. Or, or, or when you go to the quest board, it lists um, quests and in- investigations and mm. um, whatever from all over as opposed to just in your room. Yeah, and generally I've seen a bunch of people posting quests, so it's not like... It's it's too hard to if you want to play with random people. Yeah. If you want to speed grind this game, you know the best way to do it is with people, even yeah. if they're bad. It's just it's one more person do, doing damage. Mm. Plus, then you get their, the monsters get will be will be bigger. 
that's what I like about it. Like, what I like about playing with other people is that I can be bad at the game <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. Like, I like that. That makes sure. me feel much better about my stupid mo- monster hunting skills. <laughs> you know, with your weapon that you've chosen, the double wieldy fast attacky thing, I think you want to try to get, like, status effects. Yeah. You know, and so, like, um, get something that, like, increases your chance to paralyze and get a weapon that paralyzes. Hmm. You know, and then you'll just sit there and just well monsters and they'll just be like, you know, and then you can just, then the rest of us can sit and, you know, like chop tails off or, mm. um, you know, break heads and stuff with their yeah. hammers and stuff. So, mm. yeah, I don't even know why I picked the dual wielding yeah. weapon type. I, don't, it's I mean, just I would say, that's... I would say you're not too far along to try something neat and try, try to completely reinvent. Well, yeah, something. that's, that's kind of the beauty with the game is that you're not really stuck doing one thing and you're actually kind of encouraged to, uh, try out different things. And I assume later on as you get fight harder monsters, you're, you kind of have to have specific gear. Nope. No, 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 you can do anything you want with anything. It's just it'll be easier with specific gear. Yeah, well, like, yeah, that's kind of what I mean. But you don't have to. I mean, you, you know, I mean, when you get into the big, huge, like, Elder Dragon fights and mm-hmm. stuff, you're going to want to try to max out your damage output because you only have 50 minutes to take the thing down. Yeah. You know, but um, but as far as, like, I mean, if it does ice damage, you know, it's you would it would be best for you because you're probably gonna get hit so it would be best to wear you know something that will give you resistance to ice mm. but there's you know people that play dark souls with donkey conga drums i mean it's just <laughs> yeah. the game is uh, there's no reason to not go after that stuff mm. but you you don't have to at the same time right so the game's kind of nice, nice that way where it's like there isn't like a be all end all thing to use mm. you know there's other options in, yeah but you know, so you might be working. You know, so I really like last night we were fighting the Rathian. I was using my Bone Sword three, and I, then I'm like, oh, this thing's. I went and checked my Monster Hunter, um, my monster notes. Yeah, and it's like, oh, he's he's a little he's weak to uh, lightning, so the thunder. So I went and made the thunder blade. Hmm. You know, so we went and fought one of those electric um, flying dragon, squirrel dragons. dragon flying squirrels. <laughs> yeah. So, I like most of the monster artwork too. I like a lot of the designs, mm. um, the, the way they look. I like the way that like chicken is that chicken you fight that goes and steals eggs and stuff. Have you ever run into one of those? Oh, and then it picks up uh, rocks. Yeah, it pick up a rock and yeah. use like a shield. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's like giving the uh, giving the animals some kind of like goofy, you know, like trick like that. Mm. And then I found out from my brother who's never played the game, you can shoot the rock out of his hand with your bolt caster thing. Yeah. And then he's like, what the fuck? He's like, well, you're, I dropped this thing. And then you go and whack him a little bit more. Yeah, all the all the monster, like, behavior that I've encountered so far is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, the way that even other monsters interact with each other. Oh, yeah. And fight each other and try to eat each other. I, well, there's that one, the great Jay Gross. Jay Gross. Yeah, the yellow lizardy guy. Yeah, they'll actually eat smaller animals and then get the big stomach and have to drag itself along the ground. Yeah. Well, I've seen like then you have that one, then like one a bigger monster like the Aginoth or whatever it's called mm. come in and just like toss that. J- I, I, so I I, w- I had to hunt a an an uh, Aginoth mm. for some mission. Yeah, and it killed a, a, a it killed a great Jay Gross. In that mission, so I was able to get all the carves off that Jagras oh, nice. and the carves off that uh, yeah. off him when I beat yep. him. So that's a great game. Pretty One, good. Pretty wonderful good. Wonderful game. Pretty good. Game of the year 2018. Mm. Is, I, I can't think of anything else that's coming out that's going to come close. Uh, it's no Dead by Daylight, but. <laughs> I was going to try playing that. That doesn't count. Did you, I heard you survived. I did. I'm getting actually pretty good at the game. Okay. I would actually okay. That's that's a bit of an over. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that good, but I'm getting better. Like I can actually, I survived like probably three out of five matches, so it was pretty decent. As long as I'm not going up against the pig, then I stand a pretty decent chance. But that pig is just. Do you think it's in your head? Like the like. I mean, do you think like the pig just frustrates you just? Just because it's been picked, 
No, it's just that hard. Yeah. Like not knowing where the thing is. Because he can sneak around with his dumb. Yeah. And then he can attack from that place too. Right. Yeah. So it's it's ridiculous. Like they need to f- fix that somehow. And I don't know if – I haven't really looked – I'm not into like going to message boards and all that, so I don't know if people are complaining about it. I would have to assume so because it is like you've seen me play matches yeah. against a pig. Yeah. And you got a bear trap put on your head. Yeah. I mean it's super cool. I'll give it that, but at the same time it's like mm. you know you can, you're kind of screwed if so you're up against the pig. Each um, movie monster and movie slasher from that game, is it, is each one its own DLC? Yeah. How much? So the Leatherface one is $5. There's only the, one that I care about. Which, how much is the shape? <laughs> all the rest of them are seven ninety nine. Damn, that's not too bad. Well, you get, so you get the killer, you get a survivor, and you get a, a map. Cool. Which doesn't really, the map part doesn't really make sense because you can still play on the maps without buying the DLC. So I don't know. That's probably just so that um, if you don't have the DLC, you can still play it. Mm. Um, but you, so because no, you don't have the DLC and you were still able to get fight against pig face. Yeah. So it's probably kind of like those things with like I know they do with like some fighting games where they'll patch it so that you can play against people that have certain characters but right. you can't select those characters yeah and now that i think about it you if you're the killer you might be able to pick what map you play on oh, okay i'm not sure about that but get the shape that would make more sense get the shape yeah i'm thinking about it i'm i'm gonna try to get in one of these days we gotta play i agree it's good great game good great great <laughs> wonderful yeah, other than that, I haven't really been doing much either. All right. It's all been Monster Hunter and yeah. Dead by Daylight a little bit. Sure. But, yeah. Monster Hunter. Mm. So we talked a little bit about what about a Monster Hunter game set in, like, the Bloodborne universe or giving, oh it, like, my God. Or giving like a, a, a whole, like, Lovecraftian, like, you know, like a Lovecraftian Monster Hunter? No, that's a game I can get behind. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, seriously, just a reskinning. Just make the monsters Cthulhu-y looking, <laughs> and you're instead of playing a you know a tribal looking hunter guy, you play as like a nineteen, you know, twenties detective, you know, or a painter, or yep. a you know a reanimator, and uh, <laughs> that's what they should put in Dead by Daylight: the reanimator. They kind of they have a mad scientist type killer that like has some sort of electroshock power and then he makes you go crazy and you'll start to see uh like fake versions of him out in on the map oh that's that cool. scares you i think that's gonna be my non-shape like guy i play as yeah <laughs> i like that yeah but uh it's cool yeah the reanimator uh, they should just do the reanimator what there's do then? there's like, a ton of they, you can reanimate animals and they attack you. That would be cool. Like you get attacked by cats. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you have to assume at some point they're going to do Chucky. Um, Jeepers Creepers guy. Sure. What else? What else can, can they do? Maniac Cop, maybe? Sure. Or Maniac. Uh, uh-huh. Joe Spinell, where he scalps you. <laughs> but he loses at the end. He always loses out, and uh, what happens is he gets pulled into pieces in a bed. Mm. He's like laying in a bed, just gets pulled into pieces. The hook guy from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh yeah, he'll be in there. Uh, Ghostface. Oh, that could be fun. They're like running around on docks and stuff. Oh, oh, I like that. Ghostface in a, in a suburban night neighborhood. Yep. Um. Would you want? It would have to be Nev Campbell's character, but I wouldn't mind if they put in Drew Barrymore's character or Courtney Cox's. Gail Weathers. Gail Weathers. Yeah. But what else? What else could they Ed? do? Or do? Yeah. Um, the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Get that'd Sam actually be a lot of fun. There. 
Sam Neill in there. Yeah. Let's see if Sam Neill. Or Laura Dern. Or Laura Dern. No. No. Sam Neill. No. It's got to be Sam Neill. No. What? Jeff Goldblum. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. So, did you see there's a pop vinyl figure coming out of him, like, laying in that pose no. with his shirt open? There's a pop vinyl figure coming out. Oh, looks like my that. God. Oh, that's going to be that's amazing. sold out everywhere. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, using a gif of him saying, uh, nature finds a way when somebody told me that they got pregnant even though they're on the pill. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so I sent them a gif, nature finds a way. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's about it. Any news? Got some news Ooh, here. Hit me with it. So, don't breathe. We've talked about this a little bit briefly before. Sure. But uh, don't breathe too has been confirmed once again by Stephen Lang. It's happening. I think what we had talked about before was Sam Raimi talking about it, how it's like the, he, quote, the best idea for a sequel ever. So what's it going to be? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to center around the blind guy. Stephen Lang's character. Okay. So what it what what can you think of that would be mind blowing? Well, it depends. Are they going to go off the original ending or the deleted scene ending where he shows up at the airport he, with the with the stick? Oh, you know, that's right. He doesn't show up at the train station for some reason. I are you sure he isn't there? Yeah. Maybe I must be confusing like watching that deleted scene sure. and with the actual ending. I think that this movie should not be touched. No? I mean, what do you do for a sequel to that? He catches him this time and then gets her with the turkey baser? <laughs> Is that what happens this time? No, he just gets beat again? Ugh. Who cares? Prequel? No. Um, he, his, his daughter gets killed by accident? I don't want to watch that. That's sad. Was it a car accident? I don't know. Oh, yeah. She she got hit by a rich bitch, and then the rich bitch got off, right? That's probably right. And then he abducts her and turkey baser. her. Yeah. Ick. Great. Why did they have the slow-mo? Great movie. The slow-mo drip. Oh, oh and then he gets it. That was mean. Ugh. Poor guy. Mm, turkey basters. Yeah, I don't think that that movie needs to be. Nothing else ever needs to happen with that movie ever again. I didn't. I didn't mind it. I thought it was a fine movie. But I just, yeah. what do you? What? How do you do a? Pre, how do you do a sequel? And then how's it awesome? They ruined it by showing the ending at the beginning. But oh yeah, it's one of those. Ugh. Yeah, whatever. Well, we know this girl doesn't win somehow. Ugh. You know, or she gets caught up pretty bad. You know that she almost doesn't win. That's what you learn. Yeah. You learn in, the, in the first two minutes of Don't Breathe, you learn the girl almost doesn't win. Well, yeah, she's going to get captured at some point. Yeah, if this was a French Surprise. movie, like, sh- I would, if, this, if it was a French movie and that's how the movie started out, then I'd be like, okay, what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, French, they make some fucked up horror movies. They, uh, yeah, if you ever wonder why, like, horror fans can sometimes be jaded on uh, horror movies in general. It's because they've seen Martyrs and because they've seen all the wonderful foreign offerings that have been brought to us. Yeah, the, the, What I've noticed with foreign horror movies is that they'll go there. Yeah. They'll go absolutely. there where, where the American audience, uh, American directors... Either, I don't know if they will not or if the studios will not. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we've been getting sort of uh, envelope-pushing moments like Don't Breathe with the Turkey Baster. But in general, you don't really get the same level that you get from international films. Hey! Yeah, I'm talking to you. They just want Chipotle, too. Hey, man, they can forget about it. We love Chipotle, and they just want it, too. What is it going to do? Nothing. Don't give me that look. Okay, come on. 
But yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I, even the turkey baster to me is just like, ooh, shocking. He's got a cum, a cum baster. And, ooh, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more just I, like, I like the premise. gross out than yeah. actual like shocking. I don't, and even that, I, I don't. Shocking and grossness for grossness and shocking sake is is mm. is, is, is a cheap tactic to me because it's effective yeah. on me personally. I don't like it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, fuck, don't breathe. It was pretty good. What would you say is the most like? Yeah, shocking. What is the most shocking moment you've ever experienced in a... I won't even limit it to horror movies. Because, I mean, I can think of Saving Private Ryan with the whole... Uh, thirty min- The first 30 minutes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think uh, we'll have to talk about this later. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't know. Like, the most shocking, like, like, where you just don't see that coming. Well, no, not necessarily that... But like, oh my god, they disgusting. Went there. Like, yeah, okay. like that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. That's hard. I mean, I'd have to really sit and think about that. Mm. Martyrs, Mart the <laughs> skin flaying and martyrs definitely. Even not even that. I mean, the skin flaying is another. It's just like flavor text. It, it's the it's the it's the beating the, is definitely intense. It, it's the it's the gunshot to the head at the end. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Spoiler warning. I guess you don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, if you haven't seen this movie and you listen to us, you're dumb. But uh, you won't get it. <laughs> you definitely won't get it in the uh, remake. So don't well, you'll even get, worry you're, about that. You're gonna get a sweet. You're gonna you're gonna get a. I'm gonna ruin the remake for you. The the protagonist who's is suddenly awesome with with firearms and puts one right between some lady's eyes. Just without a problem. Oh, what a fucking disaster that movie is. We should start a new segment called Something Versus the Martyrs Remake. <laughs> and we'll watch, like, Five Hills Goes West. <laughs> and we'll watch, um, you know, like, Home Alone versus... <laughs> uh, what a... How dare they? I mean, what's worse? There's, that is why it's our worst movie. Yeah. I mean, The Witch has been dethroned as the worst horror movie. Yeah, the witch is freaking golden platinum compared to yeah, I would actually, Martyrs if, remake. If, if, in, comp- in comparison yes. to Martyrs, it is a quadruple platinum. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to go through, you know, three, you know, four sub rankings mm. before you get to <laughs> Martyrs. Yep. Fuck. Uh, that fire extinguisher face beating and uh irreversible mm-hmm. is one mm-hmm. you often see brought up mm-hmm. um okay shocking uh log to the dick in um antichrist oh yeah that uh that was pretty weird and then <laughs> and then and then a uh, a bloody and then and then a bloody ejaculation oh god lars von trier has issues <laughs> maybe <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, what, like, oh, uh, why would you do that? Why did you even think? I don't want to think about that. Mm. But I, you know, it, that's that was pretty shocking. <sighs> All right. Uh, Kirsten Dunn's picking that one guy over um, super cute guy, one of the Skarsgård's brother in Melancholia in, uh, oh, yeah. in uh, what's that movie? I mean, the uh, director's movie, uh, Lars von Trier. Melancholia? Uh, yeah, Melancholia. Like, wow, how could you pick uh, that dude over fucking Skarsgård ever? Skarsgård, McSkarsgård. I'd take Skarsgård. I'd take Skarsgård. I'd take Skarsgård's dad over that. Come on. Isn't he in that too? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. I think all the Skarsgårds, McSkarsgårds are in there. Next up. So we already know about God Particle. Last week we talked about how... It's rumored the title is Cloverfield Station, all space, space <laughs> monsters. It's pirate radio, yeah. but all, it's with the aliens. Yeah. Uh, that we don't really know what's going on with. If Netflix is acquiring that and we're going to be getting it soon. But now it's also been confirmed the fourth Cloverfield movie. It's tentatively called 
Overlord. Hmm. And it is set in World War II. So you remember you did you watch that trailer for yeah. that World War Two like when you're in the, you're in the That's trenches that one. game? That, yeah, it was World War One. Oh, okay. Yeah. It kind of the premise reminds me a little bit of that. Sure. Where it's like these soldiers encounter this Cloverfield monster, I'm assuming. So that'll be that'll be interesting if that's the case. Sure. I just hope they somehow some sort of genius scheme to tie all these movies together. I hope that's the case. I hope that like it's just the, it's it's the it's all the Cloverfields are prequels to the um, um, Pacific Rim movies. Oh God! And uh, that's what I hope happens. God, those movies are dumb. I still haven't seen Pacific Rim. I didn't like it. I thought you did like it. No, a piece of shit. It doesn't it's have good stupid. action. No, well, yeah, but it's fun, I guess. It's like giant robots and monsters, but otherwise, it sucked. Idris Elba, that's my first experience with him, which I was like, yeah, he sucks. <laughs> when he goes to the main character, like, do you want to die here on the wall or die in a wanza? <coughs> See, better in that or in Alien Covenant? They're both shitty movies. <laughs> <coughs> Alien Covenant. I'm pissed off. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Our boy Mike Flanagan is going to be directing something we've talked about a little bit here. A little old Doctor Sleep. You know that sequel to The Shining? Jump scare! <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Sleep? No, fuck that stupid book. That's what I... Like, I've never read it. But just the premise alone is like I'm Dumb. not I'm not touching that with a ten oh. foot pole. I don't I want I don't want to know about little uh, Danny with his psychic powers. And he turns he end up just growing up to turn out to be his dad. It's just no crap. But it's poop. But do you have hope now that Mike Flanagan is attached to direct this thing? Look, Mike Flanagan. Can polish a piece of shit but it's still going to be a piece of shit see I would have never thought Gerald's game could have been made into a great movie and yet it was by Mike Flanagan it's the whole psychic psychic powers like Is he gonna go no like matter the, what I've never I don't think I've to play Danny is he going to go yeah I've never I don't think I've ever seen a good movie with psychic powers. Um, Star Wars? No. You like any of those movies? I like them, but they're not like good. They're not great. You like Star Wars? <laughs> See, I love Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, Star Wars is good, but I mean that's that's the Force, man. That's not psychic powers. Sure, I it's guess the midichlorians. But it is nice. I mean, it, and, it, and it's real. Yeah. Give me your 55-inch TV. Midichlorians. <laughs> <laughs> Buy me Dead by Daylight. <laughs> I already did. <sighs> yeah, I know. I set that up. Oh. I got the force. Even. Oh. No, but, uh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to think about it. I don't. Mike Flanagan's only done great movies. Mm. Well, maybe. No, wait a minute. Maybe he can do it because he made Ouija Origins almost bearable. That's true. Holy shit, he could it do it. It was better than the original. That's for sure. Yeah. Mike Flanagan, we have faith in you. I, I, I've re, I, you made Origins like a bearable movie. I still don't. I don't know. I don't know. These psychic powers, they got to get around that somehow. Yeah. Because otherwise know. it's going to be dumb. I mean, it's real, it's, real it, dumb. It's, it's telepathy. Or tel- telepathy. Not like. Not like telekinesis, or does he? Is he yeah, it's uh, not like scanners' powers, right? No, it's like he can like talk to people. Yeah, it's the shining. It's the shining boy. Do you want to get sued? <laughs> What's that from? <laughs> the taint. Wrong. It's from The Simpsons, one of the Halloween specials, I oh. believe. 
course I knew that. Of course. The Simpsons. But, man, no, no. I don't know. If anybody can do it, maybe Mike Flanagan. You know what? Just give everything to Mike Flanagan or Darren Aronofsky. Yeah. <laughs> or um, who's who else is good? Oh. Um, Julian Murray and Alexandra Bustillo. Oh, yeah. Why are they good? Oh, yeah, it's fine. This will be a short, short episode. <laughs> Whatever. Well, we didn't have any news. We were, we were planning originally to do two movies, but Monster yes. Hunter came out, and you're lucky I'm here at all. Yeah. So this will be a two-part episode. Well, not technically. It's going to be an original versus remake, but we're just doing the one, the original on this episode. Yep, and then we'll do the remake. Part two. Yep. I mean, we could really do it whenever, but probably just just do it next week. Yeah. You'll get it next time we get together. Yeah. So we, that's what we're thinking. With, uh, we liked doing originals versus remakes, but it's tough. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't – we watch the movies together before we record. So when we do do the original versus remakes, we have to watch two movies. So that's roughly three hours – of our time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, we go get Chipotle. And we watch we an episode. Watch so uh, Because we can't. It's hard to eat Chipotle because he, he's an avid note taker. Yes. And um, I've, I've restarted taking notes again mm. because I just had a notebook. It's helpful. It is. But in yeah. any case, yeah. this episode's movie of the week is... 2007's Inside. This movie is starring Alison Paradis as Sarah and Beatrice Dahl as La Femme. And you may know, fun fact. Oh, hit me. Not a you may know. This is a the more you know. <laughs> fun fact trivia. Brody Dahl from The Distillers and uh, I don't know what her project was after the distillers. I think she's just going <laughs> Brody Doll now, but she got that name from Beatrice Doll. Huh. Yeah. She liked her movies, so she took her last name. The more you know. I don't, I, I don't know how that jingle goes. <laughs> it's written and directed by Julian Murray. And Alexandra Bustillo. Do the do the French pronounce two L's with a, like a Y? I don't know. <laughs> I, remember, I have I no idea. Taking a French class. Yeah. <clears throat> so this movie starts out with a little fetus chilling in the the whom the fluids. What do they call those fluids? Amniotic. Amniotic sacs. That's just one In the sack. amniotic sack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a compartment. It's like, this is my kitchen. <laughs> Here's my bathroom where I poop in my mom all day. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes out her butt. Oh. Right? Is that how it works? Or you does know, it I, does I, it get absorbed? I'm on kid number three, but I don't really know how that works. Or does it all go into the little sack? The, the placenta. Well, I mean that's the sack. Well, yeah. the placenta. So there's a there's the placenta, and then there's also like the, the the womb, and I don't. It's weird. I don't know how to explain it. Do I don't you, really know what's going on. I just go there and uh, sit. Do you think you poop out of your belly button? No, or that's where it's the food not goes a belly in. button. That's where the food goes in. Oh, nothing comes yeah, and that, out. Yeah, so that that is attached to the placenta. The uh, umbilical cord is attached to the placenta. And the placenta is attached to the wall of the uterus. Yes. And people eat them. I know. <laughs> Might be had a taste. <laughs> I wish. Mm, mm, mm. A, Sign me uh, right up for that. I went to an that. Italian restaurant once, and they, like, threw, like, my friend got this thing, and it was, like, a big, like, hollowed-out red pepper on the top of it. I'm like, that looks like a placenta on the uh. top of your pasta there. He goes, mmm, and he just starts eating it. I'm like, gross. Do you have you watched the placenta give birth? 
Because do, doesn't that need to happen? So you have birth, and then the 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 placenta has to then be also a birth, birth essentially. Yes. And no, I was too busy holding my child. <laughs> so you're just like, yeah, yeah, baby, peace out. Essentially, <laughs> I didn't like. I, I didn't want to get down there, like, and see everything because I'm just like. Uh, I mean, I saw enough for a lifetime. But, I, uh, I see back in uh, middle school. I remember vividly having to watch the video of the childbirth. Sure. No matter what horror movies <laughs> I will ever watch, nothing will ever be as horrifying and traumatic as that sight. Yeah. And, and so disgusting. It, it's just I don't I don't I don't want to watch it all the way. Like I I seen it in stages and this and that, but mm. I was worried about making sure my wife was okay and I learned that don't breathe in her face when she's going through emotions because <laughs> I was helping trying to breathe with her and this and that cuz they were telling me to do stuff and she said yeah. like, stop breathing in my face. I'm like she might try to kill me. Stop. <laughs> yeah, she gets, you know, so she was, she's a good sport um I remember we had this, uh, this is kind of gross, but uh, me and my wife had this nice, like, internal, like, like silent, quick conversation. I had to walk around uh. for the first, for my first son. I had to walk over the other side and then come back. And yeah. so I took a look just to see, because, you know, it was in the process. And she looked at me and kind of like, I said, I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, because she had, she had up there, she, on the first one, she had the epidural. Uh. So she couldn't really... She could feel the pressure in this and that because she stopped giving herself. She she stopped dosing herself. Yeah. Um. So she could feel like the pressure, and she knew like when the, the contractions were coming, but it didn't hurt. Oh. But she so she couldn't tell what was really going on down there because she couldn't feel her legs either. Right. So then I walked, I'm like, and so it was kind of a funny <laughs> little thing. But the funniest part about that though, I think we watched um, diners, drive-ins, and dives. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much up up into the last fifteen minutes, because <laughs> like they like they like, okay now push, okay. Oh, we, it was on like was in on the TV. room. Yeah, we, we and then when it really got down to the you know the nitty gritty, the, uh, and then they turned it off. But you know, because like you, there's a, there's it's not just it's like the movies don't do it justice at all. Well, yeah, and you can be there for hours and hours. Well, right? Some people are in labor for like days. Yeah. Like, with um, our first, we uh, Anne was late, so we went in to get her, her. Okay, so more grossness. We're gonna have her membrane stripped, uh, so that it would kind of kickstart the process. Yeah, because it's like essentially making her water break. I think is that's that's what they call it. Yeah, so we're gonna break her water, and then we you know see where we were, and um, so we went in, <clears throat> and she gets checked out, and the doctor says, "What's your guys' plan?" Mm. Well, we thought you were gonna strip the membrane. And then if uh, that didn't kickstart the pr- the labor, we were gonna come back on Monday and get induced. Mm. And he goes, "You're not gonna make it to Monday." <laughs> and like, and then he goes, "How far away do you live?" We're like, uh, "I don't know, a c- couple minutes or whatever." And you know, and so uh, he goes, "You could go home." So we went home, and like an hour later, we were back. Oh, <laughs> you nice. Know? You know, and so we came back, and then like you know, then I had the first one, and it's really, really easy. Hmm. And then the second one was uh, not as easy because we didn't get there in time for her to get an epidural, and she does not like pain. <laughs> I thought you said it kind of just slid right out. The second one? No, no, that one. No, not that one. He was he was a little tougher. Uh, I it was like it was kind of getting. I, I got actually like scared for a little bit because uh, like it looked like like Anne had like giving it all that she had like she was getting so tired like she was exhausted like yeah and it's like they're like you gotta push you gotta keep you know, like it's just like trying to keep your <laughs> it was like it got scary like what's gonna happen they're gonna have mm. to go run her over and get a c-section because she just doesn't have anything left yeah in the tank you know for like but we got through it everything was fine mm. like so would you say scary. the scary it's like like because she was having a lot of trouble with the pain too, but mm. and she she grinned and bared it. She got through it, and like they often said, we can give you this stuff that they we that like. She was already p- progressed way past the point that they give people this whatever that it is. Mm. But they're like the problem is, is it can kill the respiratory system of your baby, which we can bring right back, mm. but it might cause a problem for a little bit. Yeah, and I and <clears throat> it's Anne's body. 
it's her deal. She can do whatever. I, I said nothing, but inside I'm like, just do it. Just <laughs> don't, not do, just deal with the pain. <clears throat> just get through it. Do not do this drug, please. And she goes, uh-huh. no, I'm not going to do it. I can do this. I'm just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> just the idea of like um, essentially killing your kid. We can bring her right back. <laughs> yeah. like, no, thank you. <laughs> so do you say the first was easier? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He was a he was a cinch. He's harder now. <laughs> a little, little shit. No, he's good. He's fun, but he's a uh, yeah. He's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about my life. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, Sarah. Yeah. So, baby's chilling in the, the amniotic fluid <laughs> in the sack. What a fucking tangent. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then I added ten minutes this episode talking about my fucking kids. <laughs> that was the whole idea. <laughs> and then we get this boom baby gets slammed up against the walls of the uterus right sure that's a uterus why not <laughs> i love how how uh biologically uh apt we are <laughs> we are you should have very well versed in the uh Pregnancies. Yeah, we should have brought the wifey in on this, or anybody that uh, went has through a, high school has a womb. <laughs> <laughs> anybody that went through, uh, you know, sexual ed class probably would be able to explain yeah. all this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it turns out we see there has been a car crash. Real nasty one. Yep. yep. Head-on collision. Uh, it's raining out windshield is all busted up you got the windshield wiper going back and forth yep. on the broken windshield then you don't see the other car but it comes into sarah's car and her and her husband are bloody messes yes it's yeah they both look dead yeah but then she, sarah starts to move a little bit yep. she kind of i don't know sit not really sits up, but kind of moves her head. And looks over at her husband. and Yep, says her blood name. is coming out of, dripping out of both their mouths. Yeah. And the husband is not moving. Nope, and he doesn't make it. We nope, find out. he is a goner. The next scene we get is, I believe, uh, four months later? Yep, four months later. And uh, she's getting an ultrasound. It looks like uh, one of the high-end ones, like a level two ultrasound. Mm. Um. We we had to get one of those for our second and this third baby. We've had to get they've had us go in for um, level two ultrasound. So yeah, well she's pretty far along at this point. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think they even taught the doctor even says like tomorrow you're gonna have this baby. Yep. Um, I imagine they're probably doing all the level two stuff to keep an eye on it after being in the accident and stuff. Yeah, yeah. She's Sarah is. She's still kind of got the scars. She's still kind of cut up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably permanent if it's four months later. Like you, sh- she should be healed at that point as much as she's going to be. Yeah. Do you get the 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 indication that maybe she doesn't care about this kid at all and she's just going through with it? Well, I don't know if it's that or if it's depression from her husband being killed. Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe a little bit of guilt since she was driving. Yeah, um, she's she seems she seems upset. <clears throat> obviously, yes. I mean, with uh, for obvious reasons, but she seems almost like completely detached from this kid. Yeah, I mean, you would think like, yeah, this shitty thing happened. Your husband got killed, but at least you have this baby. That's what kind of like what I thought. Of, that's kind of my idea on it, but. So like, as we get as we come away from the hospital, she's with her mother, hmm. and she just wants to be left alone. So, was that her mom? Yes, Luis. Yes, that was because I couldn't tell. Um, she looked like young enough to be her sister. Honestly. Yeah. But so I, and she called her Luis. Oh, did she? Yeah. Hmm. Because she calls her mom later on in the movie. Yeah. So it's her mom. Okay, it's her mom. Right. <laughs> If it's not, is it, we'll just call her Louise for now. Sure, works for me. Uh, um, but she's trying to like 
be caring and this and that. And, mm. you know, she goes, what do you think about your boss? And it's like, it's my boss. It'd be inappropriate. So I know, but I was thinking, I was hoping to meet him. Yeah. And so she's trying to, like, you know, get with her mm. daughter's boss. And we find out she's a photographer and she, like, does the journalism, does, like, kind of, like, there's riots going on and she's been covering this. And Yeah, the whole, the whole backdrop of the movie is... There's riots going on in Paris um, because two two young guys were killed. I'm not exactly sure of the scenario, but in any case, there's riots, violence going on all throughout the Paris suburbs and all that. Cars getting set on fire. Yeah. You know, pretty ripped from the headlines, you know. Sure. Yep. Fuck. So, yeah. So, yeah, she's sitting at the park, uh, and there's, like, a couple with their kid there playing, and she whips out her camera, starts taking pictures, and uh, then her boss, the editor-in-chief of wherever she works, shows up, and he's, like, walking in front of her camera on the phone, just... she's So, she's kind of getting annoyed, but... Uh, then they start talking about her plans for Christmas, um, if she's going to go to her mom's, and she doesn't want, Did for whatever reason, anything. she doesn't want anything to do with Christmas. Christmas, yeah. But they make plans for him to pick her up at yeah. 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, because she needs a ride to the hospital. Yeah. Because she's going to go there and have a baby. Have a baby. Yep. So uh, then she goes home. Well, she gives him the keys yep. to her house, mm-hmm. and yeah, she uh, goes home. Yep, and she's uh, knitting and watching the TV. Mm-hmm. Has a has a uh, has a, and she uh, go, goes to sleep. She falls asleep in her chair, and then she has a nightmare. Well, so before this, she's like looking in her uh, dark room. I think it's her dark room. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, all these pictures of her and her husband. Yes. And then she has this, like... Vision. Waking dream of her husband coming behind her and kissing her neck and all that. And then... And then it cuts away and and Michael... Or not Michael. It, uh... What's that gear's name from Mothman Prop? Richard Gears the uh, mirror. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it cuts to a scene where the husband's head hits the windshield. Yep. Hmm. Car crash. Oh, uh, yeah. Then she has that that nightmare. Yeah, and then she goes <laughs> to sleep and wakes up with a nightmare. She starts, like, vomiting milk. Yeah, this and, white, viscous substance. And then uh, she rolls over on her back, and the cat's making weird noises. Uh, and she's making weird noises. And then baby comes out of her mouth. Baby comes right out of her mouth, <laughs> which is weird. I wonder if there's some like, is it see, symbolism? I want. I wonder if there's some symbolism to that, or if it's just like, hey, let's do something gross. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know which it is. Yeah, I don't know, like, what the what the milky substance could be. Like, why is it milk? Why well, I, I I thought maybe she's an android. Yeah. That's the most reasonable, rational I thought so. answer to this. But I don't know. In any case, a baby comes out of her mouth. And but then she, she wakes up. Yep. To a ding dong. Knock. Oh, was it a knock first? Uh, no, it's a doorbell because I thought your doorbell went off because your sound system's really nice. Could be. But, yeah, in any case, someone's at the door. So she goes and uh, well, yeah, because it's a it's a it's a it's a ding dong first, and she goes. She doesn't really know if she actually heard it, uh, and she goes and she's listening to the door all of a sudden, knock knock like this, boom. and then we get a scene from the strangers. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, it's uh, uh, somebody's out there. On, I need to use your phone. Blah blah blah. Yep, and, and she's she, looking through the peephole, but it's she can't see anything. It's too dark. Yeah, so she's like, no. Um, my husband's sleeping. You can't come in. And they kind of argue. He goes, your su- husband's not sleeping. He's dead. Yep. And Sarah. she's like, who is the... Yeah, he, he's dead, Sarah. And then she's like, what the hell? So, yeah, the, whoever this is knows who she is, uh, knows that her husband's dead. Uh, so, yeah, Sarah starts freaking out, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. 
and then she's going through the house or whatever, and oh, she and then she sees a figure in the glass, like in a like a big sliding glass window kind yep, of thing. Yep. Yep. And all of a sudden, she's like rubbing the glass, and then she just goes wham and punches it. Bam. Cracks. Then she, then she calls the cops. Well, she whips out her camera sure. and starts taking pictures. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, then she calls the police. And <clears throat> I think she – then she, like, develops the pictures. Mm-hmm. She does. And uh, she's – you can barely make out the face. But – I forgot to mention there is that really cool shot of Beatrice doll, like lighting up a cigarette and it's just like her face lit up in the dark. Oh, that was creepy with the that cigarette. Was, that was really good. Oh, really good. So Sarah develops these pictures and then she whips out a picture from when she was at the park and she notices in the background, there's the woman standing in the background watching her creepy mm-hmm. uh please show up and they they search the house one of them searches outside and then uh as then they don't really find anything and then uh it goes to a scene of her being questioned by the other officer mm-hmm but and um, then you just see the woman just coming through the front door, and nobody yep. hears her or anything. Just and you wouldn't even notice it. It's not drawn attention to it at all. It's just in the background. Yeah, you see the woman just walk right in and walk across the shot in the background. So you know she is now in the house. Yep. Then they leave, and say, so "Don't worry, she won't be back." Hmm. Yeah, she went back because she's already there. <laughs> uh, then Sarah goes to sleep, right? Yep, she goes into her bed and sleeps. Hmm. And then we get uh, La Fiume. She's standing over her in her room and then just wanders through the house for a little bit. Yep, goes to the bathroom yeah. and finds a bottle of, I assume, alcohol. Yeah. Uh, and a pair of scissors. <laughs> Skizzers. <clears throat> then she goes back to the room. Yes. And she dips the alcohol, or she dips the uh, alcohol into the scissors. No. Mm. She dips the scissors in the alcohol and then starts dragging the knife or the scissors over her body and then pokes her in the belly a little bit. And then she mm. wakes up. Oh, I. Th- needles. Just anything Any slowly punctures? puncturing the skin yeah. just makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Ugh. So, yeah, that just a little bit of scissors going into the belly button. Wakes her up. Well, she woke yep. right up and then got slashed in the face by the scissor. Yeah, right across, like, the mouth. Yeah, like, sort of. Right, like, like this kind of a thing. Yep. And then she – but then the lady gets whacked with a lamp and the mm. girl – Spends about the next uh, three quarters of this movie in a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I noticed is just kind of a quick shot. The woman has her hand up or something, and you see a wedding band. Hmm. And it's just a little bit of a – it's a clue, I think. That she was married. Yes. I I have to assume it's on purpose. Like sure. that was on purpose to show her hand with the wedding ring. It's got to be a clue, right? Yeah. Who do you think her husband is? Hmm. I don't know. Sequel. <laughs> um. So yeah, now she's in the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I think that wedding band was when. The woman tries to, when she gets to the bathroom door and is, like, pounding on it to get in. Which is great performance by Beatrice Mm Dahl. Like, 
just the insanity of and the, kicking, trying to kick the door down, and and intensity too. Yeah. So she's weird in that. Like what I what is interesting about her character through this, and you already get it a little bit, is that oh, so she chases her in the bathroom. So she she almost moves, and she's almost like a supernatural entity mm. at sometimes, but then oh. she's completely vulnerable at other times, like where she's completely at the you know mercy of her of physics. Yeah. But other times it seems like she just will float around. Well, yeah, I was just going to say like we forgot to mention that scene when Sarah initially starts to fall asleep or she is sleeping. Mm-hmm. Oh, or, god, no, she's she called her sister or friend or somebody. I think she called her boss. And she's on the phone or whatever, and yeah, you get the Michael Myers face comes out of the darkness and then fades back in slowly. Yeah, and it, it really does look like she is just floating there. Because it's not like she's stepping backwards. It's like she's flying it backwards, just, like, like floating backwards. She just like floats into that scene. She just floats away. Kind of. It's just yeah. weird. It was creepy. Into the dark hallway. That was yeah. the creepiest shot in the whole movie. Hmm. Um. Then her water breaks. No. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's uh trying to figure stuff out. Her water breaks. She tries taking pills. Can't get that to work. Um, the lady's getting real mad and poking holes in there mm. and uh, trying to look in at her. So she punches the glass to get a, a mirror to like stibby stab at her if she needs to mm. but then the cops show up no jean pierre shows up oh you're right jean pierre shows up mm. um and so what happens her is boss her boss shows up and her so the woman pretends to be her mother yeah but she grabs a needle to stab him with later <laughs> they show her grabbing something mm. and they're talking and this and that um well he's he's initially going to leave and oh, then yeah, she's she, like, she's oh, just, no, yeah, stay, stay, have a, a drink. drink. Yeah. Yeah. Which seemed like a bad idea. So they're sitting on the couch, and he tries to make a move, tries to put a hand on her leg, and she gets up and goes. She was not happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so when she is gone, getting another drink, I believe what she said she was doing, uh, he finds the picture that uh, Sarah took of that first encounter when she's standing in the dark outside the window that mm-hmm. she just punched. Yeah. And so Jean-Pierre finds this tucked in the couch, and he's looking at it, and he's like, oh, Sarah had called me about this. Like, he, she wanted a picture blown up. I don't know what for, if is for clarity or what. And he's kind of looking at this picture... And then he starts to kind of. I think he's almost putting it together. Yeah. And then the real mom shows up. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, "Who are they? Like, who are you that you just would barge in here? Where's my daughter? Blah blah blah." So uh, she goes to go upstairs. And Jean Pierre's like, "Well, then, who are you?" Yeah. And so, and and so. He, yeah, the mom goes upstairs. Yeah. And so actually, um. The uh, Sarah had grabbed a, n- another needle to um. She well, grabs a, she grabs another needle she finds in the y- thing. Yeah, it was in the bathroom. I don't know yeah. what it was. It's like it's like yeah. a sewing needle, like a crochet needle or something. Do people keep those in the bathroom? Well, if you're gonna poop, sometimes you're bored. Oh sure. <laughs> All right. You know, but uh, <laughs> I'll go with it. You know, you know, I'll, I'll allow sweater. it. Yep. Uh, you know, I ran out of toilet paper. I'll just knit myself some some wipey utensils here. <laughs> Sure. But um Mom so, gets to the uh bathroom door and gets knifed in the neck by her daughter. Knitting needled. Yeah, knitting needled into her neck. Right through the neck. Right, right in the jugular. Right across the neck. All the way through. Did it go all the way through? All the way through. If she would have not have pulled it out, her mom might have been okay. But she does pull it out. Mm, I don't her, know about that. Sprays blood I don't her. know about that. That was Straight through the neck. See, I didn't get, I didn't get the sensation that it went through. I got the sensation. Yeah, because she's, she, you had the hole on both ends. One was spurting blood. Yeah. And the other one was just a hole. Really? Is that how that worked? Yeah. I thought it was the same hole. No. Oh well. No. It was definitely all the way through. Sure. And she's like, "Mom, mom," and then 
Pierre comes up and he's like, "What's going on? Ah, oh, there's a knee in the back of my or a knife in the back of my scissors. Knee. Yeah, scissors. she loves those scissors. Yeah, she does. So she knifes him, then like slash slashes him to death. Yeah. Well, almost. Almost. Yeah. And then she, so Sarah goes back in the bathroom. Then she's kind of. Then she hears rustling, so she peeks out, and Pierre's being dragged down the stairs. He comes back to life for a little bit, but then gets a pillow shoved on his face and then stabbed into the face th- through the pillow. Yep. <laughs> so. Jean-Pierre gets got. Yep. And then she's come, she's kind of wandering around the house, and then she tries – then uh, the lady almost gets a hold of Sarah again. So Yeah, she gets a hold of her hair, right? Yep, but she manages to then stab the lady – in the arm with that knitting needle yeah. and then breaks it off so it's stuck in her arm. Mm. And then so she pulls her arm through and she's crying. She locks the doors and the lady pulls the needle out of her arm with the um, her teeth. teeth. And then she's freaking out, slamming the door mm. and then they both kind of stop and uh, the Sarah woman. asks, who are you? Mm. And the woman says, just give me your baby or something like that. I want the baby or something like that. Yeah. And then she's freaking out. I think at this point she's putting a hole in the thing and she's looking at her because I think that's when maybe the water breaks because of uh, all that trauma. Because every time that Sarah goes through any like trauma, you'll see like the baby going through the trauma. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I don't know. But then the woman is sitting in the hallway. Then you hear whoop whoop. Here's some. Whoa! No! 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 She's sitting in the hallway, and then Sarah's cat comes. Oh, yeah. Comes along, and, and, yeah. just wants to be pet, and then gets killed. Yep, that seemed completely needless. The woman. <laughs> so, you know, well, let's, let's kill a cat too. It uh, it kind of just uh reinforces that insanity sure. that this woman has. But uh, yeah, so then uh, she uh, yeah. Oh my god. It's so it's I mean it's horrible but it's so good like that scene is so good she snaps the cat's neck yeah. and then just tosses the cat aside like mm-hmm. oh she's real brutal. mad about something yeah I kind of had an idea but you know mm. um it's pretty obvious actually I don't know if it's obvious well she wants the baby yeah you know so it's like uh, some people are like that I mean they want babies uh, well, basically what Baby I, snatchers. What's obvious, I'll, I'll explain to you what I knew something about this lady. Uh. Right, right, pretty, pretty. Well, as soon as she, I knew she wanted the baby, mm. I pretty much knew the, this lady was related to something in this movie. Mm. We'll get to it. But uh, then the cops come, right? Yes. And so it's uh, two cops. They're like secret police or something. And they I think get, it's, it's three police. Oh, yeah, three police and a kid they picked up trying to Molotov cars. Yeah. <laughs> and they go, hey, we got to do a spot check on this place. Hmm. So they go in there. The lady, the lady locks the girl in the bathroom with a dresser or something, or like an end table. Yeah. So she can't undo the latch, you hmm. know, so she can't push it open at all. And so... The one, one of the cops stays out there because he's having some sort of argument with his girlfriend, mm-hmm. and so him and the the hooligan mm-hmm. are still in the cop car, and the other two go to the house. Yep. The woman opens the door, just like yeah, everything's fine. Yep, and then they leave, and they come back, and they say, "Wait, they were missing a detail." Although, yeah, the one cop has this this epiphany, like, "Oh, hold on a second here." And he goes, they go back to the house and he's like, something about like, how's your baby or something? Yeah. And then you realize, oh yeah, she's they realize a, that she's, she's not, not pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> Clearly. Then they go in and um, the one guy's talking to the other guy. Can you mind if I take a look around or something? Or he hears something. So he's going upstairs. Mm. Then he sees the blood um, and he's like, arrest her right now. So they arrest so he's going to arrest her. Oh, the one guy. You know what we missed um, before? I think it's before the cops show up, or in any shortly, shortly around that time. Sarah has her arm out the door, and the woman stabs it to the wall with scissors. No. Yeah. No, I'll tell you when that happens. Mm. So. 
she had broken the mirror and like they were kind of having a standoff for a second, you know? Yeah. She broke the mirror, grabbed that piece of glass and then started stabbing a hole in to see what's going on. Yeah. And uh, she made herself a hole so that she reaches out to try to push that dresser out of the way. Right. You know? And um, so what happened, that, that's after she killed the two, the, she, so she kills the one cop downstairs. Because the cop's trying to arrest her, she pulls the needle out, stabs him in the eye, mm. and then the neck, and he dies. Yes. Then she's, uh, the other guy goes upstairs. Wait a minute. You're right. Because he's going upstairs, and, and he finds her. Yeah, he, he finds, pulls the scissors he out. He pulls the scissors because he finds her up against the wall. That's yeah. right. Nope. So how did, why did that happen? Because I think she was trying to move the dresser, and then the woman came and stabbed her hand to the wall. I know when it happens. Hmm. She's pounding on the wall, or she gets that hole in there. She's making that hole, and yeah. she's trying to fiddle with the thing while she's talking to the cops. The cops go away. She comes back, then nails it to the wall. Yeah. And then the cops come back again. And so, Oh, then that's right. It's yeah. in that interim where the first cop. they're they're like, oh, everything's fine here. And then they have the epiphany yep. and come back. So, yep. And yeah. so then he gets her out of there and he's going to help her. And uh, the problem is, is the other cop was carrying a gun. Yep. And the lady got it. And no. blows half that skull all over that lady's yep. face. Half his head is gone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that was gross. And uh, That was a good, uh, like, I would say jump scare. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look at jumpy gore scare. Yeah. I mean, you know it's coming, so I don't know if it's not really a jump scare. You don't know it's coming. You don't well, know his head's about to explode. You didn't see that coming from a mile away when the when the camera, when the director put the camera on the other cop's gun and then at the woman's face, like, oh, I got a gun now. No, I did not. Okay, I should say, sure, you can think that he's going to get shot. Yeah. But I did not expect his head to explode. Oh, sure. I, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, I knew he was going to get <laughs> shot, so I wasn't all that surprised when his head exploded. Yeah. I was, you know. But uh, then she shoots uh, the door a few times. Yep. And yeah. then the other cop in the car hears these gunshots. So he drags the prisoner, and he should have just left that guy in the car. Yeah, I mean, come on. The kid was just... Trying to Molotov cocktail yeah. cars. But uh, <laughs> they go in there, and... Uh, He's got, like, a leash attached to him. Yeah, it's weird. Then he gives him, like, some kind of weird, like, flare gun shotgun thing. Yeah, it's like a double... Barrel big barrels. Gun. Yeah, That's I don't know we- it was what. Weird. But uh, so they go up there, and they don't see the woman. Mm. And um, we do, though. So they go up in the bathroom. They find her. They're trying to help her out. They give her some bandages for her hands. And the other, the kid's freaking out because he sees the other cop with his head all over the place. Yeah, he's puking. Yep. And then you see the woman walk by. Yep. And then um, <clears throat> as they're trying to help her out, <coughs> they go to clear the place. Mm. And then um, you're like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And then they come back. But then the power goes out. Yeah. So Sarah goes back into her bedroom and falls asleep. Yeah, they get, they get her hands bandaged up because yeah. they're all cut up from her holding that shard of glass. Yep. Pounding it into the so door. She, she, they gave her a gun and she just lays on the bed. Yep. Um, and then, um, they're they, down there at the fuse box trying to fix the fuse. Yep. And they're like, you know, trying to flash where the light is. This and that. And so they think they hear something. So they start backing up. Then you see the shotgun thing come out of the corner because mm. at some point they lost that. And, yeah. Um, it's it's against the dude's head. Then it cuts away and you hear boom, boom. Mm. So I figured she shot them both. Yeah. Incorrect. And that doesn't wake up Sarah either. Or does it? Uh, I don't. No, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. I know what happens. Uh, so it goes down there. You see the cop on the floor and the boy crying. And then she just goes and stabs the boy in the head. With the scissors. With the scissors. And right in the center of the forehead. Yep. And then he pulls him out and he's got. He's like tr- like trying to attack. And, well, then, uh, and she just lights a cigarette and lets him die. Yeah. Um. Then we get this weird scene where she like, starts licking Sarah while she's sleeping. Licking? It's, like, remember she's, like, licking and, like, rubbing her lips on her and stuff? And then Sarah bites her lip? Oh, yes. So Sarah bite, wakes up, bites her shit, and she screams, and she's trying to get away and doesn't. And then, like, at this point, uh, La Femme, or whatever her name was, the lady. The woman. Is just backhanding and punching Sarah all over the place now. Yeah. She gets downstairs, um, and she's in the kitchen. Is that when she has the uh, like spear? No, she um, she's got nothing at this point. No, she's got the needle again, and she's gonna kill. Oh, that's the baby. right. She's got the needle up against yeah. her stomach. So, 
she's like this, like getting ready to do it, and the lady's like, and then just uh, like, no, and she's like, oh, here's a toaster over here. What? <laughs> just wax her Knocks with a toaster. the fuck out of and her. So she falls on the oh. ground, and um. You know, then uh, something happens where she ends up on the floor, then she's lighting a cigarette, mm. and then Sarah grabs a can of something and sprays like her with hairspray. It, hairspray, and then it burns her whole face, and she runs away screaming. Yep. So Sarah makes a spear out of a knife and a protractable something. Yeah, I have no idea what that was. Is yeah. like, what has yeah. a pipe? I don't know. I don't. French people. If you're French and you know what the hell that like extendy a, rod thing was. Yeah, I think it kind of looked like something you'd put on, like, a, to hold blinds up. Oh, maybe. But anyways, uh, she makes a spear, and she's going around the house looking for the lady. Mm. And then she finds her. And the lady's sitting there, like, with her face all burnt up, like, oh, this is how she gets the upper hand in the story. Yep. Nope. The lights come back on suddenly. And, uh, oh, no, time out. You're right. There's more. You there, there, yes. get a little bit of uh, uh, conversation here. Yeah, you find out what's going on. Yep. Uh, so. Because she says. Could you kill me again, Sarah? You've already killed me once. Yep. And then you get the. Then you find out that she was in the car accident. Yep. She Sarah. was pregnant. Also pregnant. Also pregnant. And uh, was in the car accident. Yep. And lost her baby. And um, what do you think. What was all about. Uh, because Sarah says they told me no one survived. Yeah. What do you think that was all about? Well, I think what the idea is that they thought that the other driver died. Like she, like maybe, like maybe she went into a coma for a while and came out of it, mm. and kind of a thing. And um, I mean, they can't tell Sarah what happened to the other driver, anyways, because of HIPAA violations and stuff. You don't get. Oh, to really? Know. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And okay. So I mean, I I don't know what they can say. You know. Um, but, uh, so, well, maybe they could tell her if she survived or not. Well, yeah, that, I mean, well, telling you, her that no one well, survived here, is kind of the same thing. And as, you think there would have been, like, all that insurance fighting over car damage and then loss of life and all that stuff? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I, uh, it, my, it's my point a minor earlier is detail, I knew but the, when she was trying to get the baby, I figured she was somehow related to the accident, this lady. Sure. And so, like, that mystery was immediately revealed. Like, oh, she is either. What I thought was, like, because she was older, like, like kind of looked like she could have been her mother's age. Like, maybe, mm. um, I thought, well, maybe that's, like, the estranged mother of the, her husband. Oh, sure. Or um, somehow related to them in some way. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, anyways. Oh, we forgot about the whole scene with the smoking nurse at the hospital and the Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, well, watch the movie. Yeah. Um, sh- then the lights come back on, and you look over in the cop. You see the back of that cop who got shot in the head, mm. and he's fixed the lights. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> and then he turns around, and he's got a big hole in his head, and his eyes are burnt out, but he's he can see enough to bash Sarah with a billy club to her stomach over and over again, and, like, blood comes out of her womb. And, Gushes, yeah. And then, but then... That was her real water breaking. Yeah, and then... uh. <laughs> The lady with the burn face stabs that dude to death. With the so, spear that so Sarah So what made. I thought, because you don't see his face right away, I thought, that's her husband. Oh, and they're in on it. That's oh, what I thought at first, yeah. you know? And uh, that's because I watched too many American movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's how they would have done that. If Yo. the remakes, that's what's going to happen. But um, So he turned around. That was a weird face he had. It's like, how did he see enough to... How did he see enough to beat her with that billy club? And two, why did he beat her with that club? Well, and how did he fix the power when he's clearly, like, r- severely fucked up? Yeah. I don't... Like, that whole part of that, I don't understand what happened there. That the whole, that whole thing is lost on me. Like, how is he a back... He can't... His eyes look like they've been burned out of his head. You know, they kind of look like the monsters from the Mike Flanagan's movie last week. Oh, yeah. Kind of look like that. And yeah. I, I was like, what the fuck? Oh, then he beats her with that club. And it's like, why would he do that? You I know? mean, you could argue that it is all just, like, instinctual at this point. He was, he knew there was a threat and he was attacking. But, but it looked like he could like, see her. It looked like his eyeballs were burned out of his head. Right? You remember, like, not like, like his eyes totally. Were gone. They were, like, no, they weren't totally gone. Sure. They were, like, really red. But they were still there. Okay. 
they just look dead. Yeah, well, it was weird to me. And yeah. he beats her with this stick anyways. And I'm just like, okay. Then he gets stabbed to death. Yep. And then uh, Sarah's trying to get away. and She gets to the stairs. And then uh, that's where she has the baby. Yeah. Uh, by um, scissor section. Oh, uh, man. This was a difficult scene. And yeah, I didn't yeah. This definitely goes up there with. As we were talking about before, most shocking moments. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, this is probably one of the most shocking yeah. moments I had. I mean, yeah. I thought for sure the, the lady would get the upper hand somehow, mm. uh, Sarah. But, but no, no. This she, is, she this is not America. Nope. She, I mean, even <laughs> in Martyrs, you could say that the martyred girls gets the, gets the, laugh, gets the last laugh. Well, sure, <clears throat> sure. She does. She's does still, she? She dies. Does she really? She dies, but I mean, with her entire body flayed. Yeah, I would say that she. Uh, there was there's there's a karmic justice in martyrs. That's what you call silver lining. Yeah, it's like there's 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 a karmic justice is what I'd call it, where this lady's been doing terrible things to people, finds out what is going on, and then decides that that's it. Yeah. In this movie, Sarah no. just gets the raw deal. Yep, so it it shows the scissors going into the belly button and unlike the first time she it makes slides it right on oh. in there. She sniffs snips up. It I shows this all. I can't imagine that it would be that e- that easy to cut through flesh like that with uh, a scissor. I have no idea. I don't want to I don't, don't want to learn. I don't want to Yeah, I don't uh, want to find out. But uh yeah, so then she gets the baby. Yep. And she then it, uh She's walking through the house with the baby. It pans over all the dead people, mm. including Sarah, and then it goes back and she sits in this rocking chair. It's lit by like a red light. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, super cool shot. And she's rocking with this baby mm. with her and, burned face. Yep, and then it pans back over to Sarah on the stairs. An intestine is dripping out there, and she's got this nasty old hole in her belly. And uh, a single tear, blood tear, drips down her eye. Yep. Wow. So that was uh, Inside. Inside. The original. <clears throat> what do you think? I think it's a great movie. It It's, it's up there with Martyrs for me. Um, it didn't quite have the same, like, existential impact as martyrs Mm -hmm. but it definitely as far as like just like raw kind of brutality so this movie is in between hostile and martyrs for me whereas really yep so hostile is this movie that's just like brutally gory blah 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 Mm. and the director of martyrs was like i like the premise but i want to make it about the pain Sure. And so he has this whole altruistic thing where they're trying to find out what happens in the afterlife. Mm. So there's this altruistic goal to torturing these women that eventually, you know, turns around on them. Yeah. In this movie, um, it's about the pain and the torture. But it's, 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 it's got the, it, it's, in this movie, it's got a bunch of the, like, shocking gore. Uh. But it's about, you know, a more, like, it's, it doesn't have that same existential thing to it. Right. And so I'm a sucker for existentialism mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. So I definitely like Martyrs more than this. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I need movies to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I really kind of like that. That was, that was more than I ever needed in mm-hmm. a movie. Like, I mean, it just, it, just, it was just, it was just, it, it, it took a premise of like, of like, like the loss and stuff and like somebody coming out and it, it took all like the, it, what you usually see in movies like that is like, it's like a thriller kind of a thing. And this mm. was just like, just a brutal, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's a brutal home invasion. And, um, and, and know, then it just keeps going. Yeah. Like, and, but there's no, there's no like trick to it. There's no, um, she's deaf and, and she's trying to figure out a way to beat it. There's no, uh. there's no real fight though. The pregnant lady never really has a chance. It seems like, and it, then it, and then you, and then you get the whole effect of like, um, you know, th- her getting saved is botched by five, six people. Fuck it up <laughs> from this one lady with a needle, and yeah. it's like, okay, well, that seems. 
so basically this movie is about um hopelessness there's just mm. you know and it just it's just it's depressing it there there it's why I don't like it as much as Mars. It, there's, it, it doesn't do. It just, it just, it makes you feel sad. You know, there, it doesn't do anything else. You know, I would say Martyrs does the same thing. Martyrs it has, has the karmic no justice hope. at the end. No, see, that's where we differ. I don't view that as karmic so justice. So you don't think that the lady torturing all those people finally gets a martyr that makes it to the end and back, and she gets what she wanted, and she tells her that there's nothing. She's going into it hoping that there's going to be this thing. So she's she's been murdering women. Yeah. And then f- learns, I mean, it's not even the, the, it's not even her shooting herself. She's been murdering women trying to find out what the afterlife is mm. and then find out it's nothing. And that woman went through all that pain and suffering and then gets to tell her you get nothing. Even if or like cuz you never know what she says to her. You never know what she whispers. Uh Maybe she says, I'm not going to tell you. Oh. I mean, there's so many different things she could have said to her. Yeah. And so for me, there's more, um, the story's more interesting. This this is taking a tragedy and then just piling more tragedy on it. Mm. And then it's like, a, it's like a bun, right? Here's tragedy. Here's some sloppy joes, which is all the gore. And then here's some more tragedy, and you just hear <laughs> feel bad about, you know, things. Well, what I, what I appreciate about Inside is that it doesn't really do what you expect it to do. Like, because you're sort of conditioned into thinking that movies generally have a happy ending. Yeah. Like, the villain usually always fails at their plan. Sure. So I appreciate the fact that Chaotic this movie, evil one. yeah, <laughs> she gets what she wants. She, sure. what she came there for. Yeah. In the end, and uh, yeah, just I mean the sheer brutality of it. Um, I enjoy. Sure. I mean, enjoy is not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. I I like when filmmakers push that envelope. Like sure. they're not afraid to show you that show brutality sure. and graphic images and all that. Um, yeah, I, I I I appreciate that, but it's wasted on me personally. Hmm. It's like you're okay, so you made me you made me cringe. Thanks. Yeah, you know you you didn't tell a good story though. That's that's my in the end. Like this story isn't anything that spectacular for me. It's yeah, it's, it's a it's, it's it's a tragedy. There's a loss, and somebody wants to make up for the loss by taking something from somebody that they blame they lost from. I mean, it's every action movie. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> you know? it's definitely not like a super huge twist. No. To find out that she was the one that was yeah. oh, in the accident. Oh, the other well. person in the car was also you know pregnant. And, and, and she whatever. ends up being a crazy Well, she psychopath. goes crazy. You know, she wasn't a crazy psychopath. She goes crazy. Oh. Sure. You, know, you know, that's that's the thing, you know. And so, but then you could look even deeper and like, okay, so not only did she lose her baby, but maybe because of this, she also lost her husband. So. I mean, you could speculate anything that happened yeah. off screen. Yeah. My speculation with martyrs is you see happen and you don't, but you and you can't. You sure. Can guess. I sure. Mean, so I mean, you could speculate any of that. None mm-hmm. of it really matters. What all that matters is that because of the accident and her mm-hmm. losing her baby, she went nuts. Yeah. I mean, besides besides, I mean, you, know where I've, you know where I've seen this story before. Huh. Don't breathe. What do you mean? A guy loses his daughter and tries to get another one. Oh sure. It's the same story. Yeah. And so. Um, what I like more about like even don't breathe is it, it, it's got uh, it's it's got some like fun to it mm. like when they're trying to like get away from the, the there's like a thing here this is just so grindy and just so uh, gory and just so like just brutal it just it's it, it, it gets to a point where it's unnecessary t- t- for me yeah for me and so that, that's why like for me it just it's, it's wasted on me it's the same thing with hostile it's like hostile and um those other ones like that just like ooh let's be shocking and gory it's like your story still sucks you know and <laughs> you know and i you know it, it, it so i appreciate it cuz it's effective it, 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 mm. it they're getting the response on me that they're going for but I, I i definitely wouldn't put this in the same category as hostile no no not by i wouldn't yeah like i it makes me feel a little bit cringy just like putting having that in the same sentence sure like I I would never 
equate this in sure. any way. I think I, I think that I think the brutality is used the same way. That's their correlation for me. Is it's just like let's see how brutal we can get, you know. Well, I don't know though. I mean, it's just that sure. it's, it just seems that hostels less tactful about it. Like this seems to have a point. Whereas hostels, it's the story. It's the it's hostel story is not as good as this story. Well, yeah, the whole point of hostel is they're hurting people to hurt people. Yeah, and she's hurting someone because she wants her baby. Yeah, because she's killing whatever is All getting in her do, way. She should just turkey basted her. Yeah, or something, you know. But <laughs> you know, so um, yeah. So besides besides the story, though, I think. The directing and sound design and all that it was really good. Really good, especially those moments. Um, the music, man. When it was that weird, like uh, almost like staticky sort of. It sounded like static being short. played through a tin can. Yeah, like she was like yeah. throwing up the blood and stuff. And yes, like, yes. It was almost like they recorded her and then they put in like like a telephone filter. Yeah, like a weird filter over it. it was yeah, weird. this crazy. Cool See, designs. The, that kind of jarring work I like. Mm-hmm. When you do stuff like like the scenes where there was that were brutal but had like those weird sound effects. Yeah. I that was cool to me. Like mm-hmm. it's like oh cause that, that that jarred me in a way, but like the the end where sh- they show you gutting her and taking the baby. Right. You know. Right. I didn't need that. All right, you could have you could have <laughs> you could have uh you could have um you could have cut away from that for me. I didn't yeah. see that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to see the rest of that. Because they're in the cutaway from shooting that other guy in the head with that flare gun, but whatever that thing was, yeah, whatever that thing was. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's um, it's it's not my cup of tea. Mm. Um, I don't think it's bad by any means. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't rank it with hostile. Sure. Um, I don't like hostile at all, really. Mm. I mean, I might like, I might like Martyrs remake more. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Um, but I, I actually would say I like The Witch more than Hostel. I would rather watch The Witch than Hostel. I don't know. Hostel has a certain amount of entertainment value, some fun to it. I just hate college kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you get to see them all get tortured and killed. Yeah, that's not what I need them to do. I just need them to stop saying, bro. <laughs> uh, but no, it's not even that. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I just I, – the, the problem with that movie is there's just, there's, you, you don't care about them at all, those sure. people at sure. all. There's it's, – it's, you know, or this, this story you can – you know, I I think with 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 this movie, it's I don't like it, but for the good, for the right reasons. Mm. I I don't like it for exactly the right the reasons they don't want me to like it because it's brutal. Sure. Because it's visceral. Because it's a sad story. So everything that they were going for, it was successful with mm. me, and that's why I don't like it. But mm. I would still give it a good score. Well, and so what what will you give it? Um. Based on on its on its on the techniques and with the sound and this and that, I would give I would at least put it in the gold. Um, the story is the same story I've ever heard in any action movie or horror movie where somebody mm. loses something and somebody's trying to take it. Yeah. But every story has already been told has been told. Mm. So I really can't fault it for that. But um, as I I appreciate the successfulness of it getting me to cringe, but mm. I don't want to cringe, so I don't really <laughs> like it for that reason. So it's really hard for me. I'd put it somewhere between silver and gold. I mm-hmm. just when you because it, and maybe it's not fair because it's French. You, you hold it up to like martyrs, and it it doesn't for me. It doesn't touch martyrs, but nothing does. But uh, see, I'm 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 almost there into the platinum category, right up there with martyrs. But I will go with gold because I agree the story isn't that complex sure. or surprising See, like so like with the gore and, and the and the more visceral do you f- you don't feel all like it's kind of cheap no not at all okay i mean there wasn't there isn't anything in there where it's like okay that's a little bit over the top like just like laughably sure outlandish sure. like it it all made sense like yeah she's gonna stab the guy in the neck with her the needle yeah yeah, she's so gonna, everything, 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 every. It was extreme for sure, sure but, but it wasn't like yeah. it all had like a Thanksgiving yeah. sort of 
outlandish. So it all had a purpose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I'll go with that. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'd give it a gold. I don't think I ever yeah. want to watch it again. Like, I'll watch Martyrs <laughs> again. But I think I need that. I, for me, I think I for when, when something's that upsetting and disturbing, I think I mm. need that existentialism to ground me. Sure. So I think this movie is very successful in, in making me feel, ugh. Yeah. Which is, I don't, it's a bad, it's... It's not bad because the director did exactly what he was looking to do. Mm. I, so he's that's that's success. That's a success for me. Well, and I think just especially Beatrice Dahl, like oh, her acting was awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Like, so I, I'll go, I'll I'll come out of silver and go gold for sure. I, I I can't go platinum, but you know what? You know what you can do though. Hmm. Is you can say it's platinum. I'm we not, don't, see, we don't, uh, we we need don't to, have to. We, we don't have to be. No, 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 no. We need to reserve the platinums for the martyrs of this yeah. world. Sure. And this, it gets close, but I'm going to stick with gold as well. Sure, sure. So gold. So, yeah, I would say gold. Um, I think it's successful in what it does. Um, mm. See, like when I think about, it, I was like, I would love to show another person martyrs. Yeah. But I have no desire to show anybody <laughs> this movie. You know what it might be actually too is it just hits too close to home. Sure. You know, because yeah. I have kids and this and that. It could be that. It's mm-hmm. too close to home. I have yeah. a pregnant wife. It's too close to home. Yeah. That's, that's probably very what well it is. could be. <laughs> yeah. I bet you that's what it is. I bet you it's it's too close to home, and I don't like it for that reason. Sure. I'm very curious about this remake. Sure. Is it an American remake? They speak English, Okay. but it's not made by Americans, I don't oh, believe. so, okay. So it's I not. Think, okay. Yeah, it's... Because it's written by uh, two guys that worked on the Rec series, which is Spanish, yep. Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, That's where the Spanish come from. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about the director. Okay. I'll have to look. He's definitely not American, but I, I don't know if he's also Spanish. Sure. But, hmm. Yeah. I wonder what would possess a person to want to remake this movie. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because it's just like I don't think you could. How do you top this? Well, it's it's kind of like martyrs. Like, who thought that was a good idea to remake that? Yeah. yeah. Why would you remake that movie? Right. And then especially make it that fucking shitty. No, I will. <laughs> I would say yes. Remake this movie. Remake Mars, but it should be the directors that directed the original versions, and they yeah. just did a shot for shot remake with English uh, with English speaking. Funny actors. games. Exactly. Yeah. What was that guy's name? I don't, I don't know. remember either. But uh, a scars guard was in that. Gerber, Gerber. No, it wasn't. It was Michael Pitt. <laughs> oh, that's right. But um, yeah. So I don't know. Gold, a gold. solid gold for me. I'm never gonna watch it again. But solid well, you'll gold. watch. I'll watch the remake. We'll see what that remake is next time on the Scream Fiends. Get at us on Twitter at Scream Fiends. Let us know what you think of the original Inside. Yeah. Do you think it goes too far? Does it? Is it too much? Is it Yo, Zander, not enough? Your co-host is a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to hear a lot. And all that. <laughs> Subscribe on YouTube. Like, comment, all that good stuff. Patreon.com slash Scream Fiends. You can donate if you would like. We love your support. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, Google Play. Yeah. Yeah. Look for the thrilling conclusion to the Inside Original versus Remake next week. <laughs> Maybe next week. From us at Scream Fiends. So long and farewell. We should do a Scream Fiends next week. Let's watch Office Space. <laughs> <laughs> I need a, oh my god, I need it's a, been far too long since I've seen I it. I need to come down after that movie. <laughs>